Good morning. Today we're going to go into our fourth lecture on this series of the study of the book of Revelations. So if you've been following along, uh, we're going to continue at verse 4, and we're going to try to get through 4, 5, and 6 possibly today. Um, I've decided, as I said before, when I began this series, to keep them all 8 to less than 15 minutes so that people can just get a good snippet, a good study before they go to work or after they come home or before they go to bed. So I pray the Lord blesses you through this study. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless the reading of your word, cleanse our minds, hearts, souls, and spirits, strengthen us according to Christ Jesus, grant us wisdom and knowledge, liberally, upbraideth it not, fulfill thy will in us, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We begin in verse 4, he says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. We're going to begin right here um, with John to the seven churches which are in Asia. One of the things I want to emphasize again is John is from the Hebrew origin, and it simply means Jehovah is a gracious giver. So this salutation, this message to the churches begins with Jehovah is a gracious giver. My friend, God will provide all your needs through Christ Jesus, who is able to meet those needs. He says if you ask anything, in his name, and that means according to his will, being a saved, born-again believer in Christ Jesus. Once you are born again, you are in the name of Jesus. But if you ask anything in his name, he will do it. So God is a gracious giver, and he's writing this, the salutation is to the seven churches which are in Asia. And the word Asia, um, long before Orient meant Orient, it means those of the Orient. And it meant those who are seeking to orient themselves to something. So God is writing this letter to the seven churches, and that means to called out the ecclesia, which is the word for church. Ecclesia means called out believers, those who have left their own home, so they can meet together in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to honor Him, to worship Him, to learn of Him, and to praise him. These are the ones that are wanting to orient themselves with his word, with his way, and with the worship of the true king to serve him. He writes to the seven churches because seven is the number of completion. If you've ever studied uh, num numerology in the Bible, there are specific numbers that carry significance, and seven is one of those. It, it is the number of completion. And within those seven churches, we're going to find completion. Each one of those churches has a different name, has different characteristics, traits, different things about them that we can glean from. But together, all seven show everything that the churches of God can have and should be and should stay or refrain from being. So that's who it's written to. And he says, grace be unto you. Now, grace means caris, and it means the special favor, but it's a little deeper than that. It's when God turns his face towards you and smiles, when he takes special significance of you. When he, he puts his favor, that means he notices you, he's looking at you, and now he's going to put his special favor, a blessing, just from his stare being upon you puts special protection around you, makes darkness back away, brings in the focus of the light upon you. And so that's what this means, is, is grace, which means this, the smile of God while his eyes are upon you, driving the darkness back and filling you with his light, surrounding you with his light and filling you with his love and his power. <clears throat> and he says, and peace from him which is which was and which is to come. This word peace is, is literally Irene, Irina, and 
what it means is to be exempt from all rage and anger and lack or having no chaos in your life. So when, when John is saying to us, to these of the seven churches or the complete church of Christ, peace be unto you, he's literally saying, may you have tranquility, be exempt, have no rage or anger within you, and may there be no chaos in your life, but everything in complete order, giving you that tranquility. And this can come, as he says, can come only from Jesus Christ. He's identified as from him, and that means the direct sender of, which is. And literally, the, the simple and plain language means he exists. He's the existing one. And that is actually one of the most powerful names of God. When Moses went unto Pharaoh, and Moses said, Who should I tell the Israelites that sent me? And he said, Tell them that I am has sent you. I am that I am. When Jesus was being confronted by those seeking to take him, and he says, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am. He literally said that holy name of God, and they were all picked up and thrown down. They were thrown down on their faces in front of him. Because at the name of Jesus, the holy name of him, everything will bow. Either on their own, or they'll be thrown down. All principalities and powers are cast down before him. That's who this is. This is the El Elyon, the strongest strong one, but he's also the I Am, the self-existing God, Jehovah. He says, from him which is, the self-existing one, and that means he is all being, and which was, and very interestingly enough, it means the one from which all things have came. In John chapter 1, NRK on Theon, a Theon on Logea, on Logea on Theon. In the beginning was the Word, NRK on Logea, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made which is made. That's who this is speaking about, Jesus the Creator. First, it's Jesus the self-existing one. He needs nothing else, but He is complete in Himself and all things Secondly, come from him, the creator. But he's also that which is to come. And when we get to this word, it's erkomai. And what it literally means, he's the one that's already there in another place at the end of time. All through time, he's there. He is not absent or existed anywhere except in his creation and everywhere around his creation. There is no point in time that Jesus is not. And this word literally means when you get to tomorrow, he's there. He's the one that will be there, be surrounding you, that will be providing for you, will care for you. He doesn't need anything. He's the self-existing one. He's Jehovah. He's also the creator, the one which was. By him, all things came into existence. And by him, all things consist or stay in existence, according to Hebrews Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. But also, he is the one that will be there tomorrow. I pray as we begin this study, we'll study next about the seven spirits which are before the throne of God, and we're going to tie that into Isaiah. I pray that the Lord blesses you mightily through this study. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.